Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. Keith One Time Thurman talks Arrow The Truth Spins Jr. and it might not be what you think. Stay tuned. What up Fight World, it's your boy Ego and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button, also subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats, channel donations, the Venmo and the Patreon family. We are working. Now shout out to Fight Hub, they conducted a phone interview with Keith one time Thurman who is a WBC and a WBA champion, two belt champion, the only two belt champion in the welterweight division. And he had some interesting things to say. I'm going to jump right into his quotes. Link in the description in case you want to listen to the actual audio here firsthand for yourself. Again, shout out to Fight Hub. And then I'm going to give my thoughts. Keith Thurman says, Sean Porter, I have a feeling he's going to be mandated because he's holding on to that mandated position. Right? Saying that the Spence fight probably won't happen in 2018. He says, because of my injury, the WBC, they, they've yet to mandate it. They might try and pressure me and mandate it. And he goes on to say, Errol Spence, he's a tremendous fighter. It'll happen and we'll definitely fight. I didn't get here overnight. People could say what they want to say. I'm going to fight Sean Porter. I'm going to rematch Danny Garcia. I won't fight any of those guys right now. If I do have a mandatory right around the corner, it's going to push everything back. I know boxing. I know how the business works. As much as I respect Errol Spence Jr., he's still a young, fresh champion. It's not going to hurt him by having a few title defenses and me getting back in the ring, doing what I have to do before we see each other. If he's that dude, he's going to keep his O, and I'm going to keep my O, and we're going to see each other sooner or later. We're going to see each other eventually down the line. I know Errol Spence has never fought a fighter like me. I'm unique and I'm versatile in the ring. He goes on to say nobody has fought a fighter like him. He's saying the fight could be bigger. Of course, how can it not be bigger? If his name is bigger, my name is bigger, and we negotiate a contract, it automatically is bigger. There's no Keith Thurman Mayweather. There's no Keith Thurman Pacquiao. So if EJ, Errol Spence, is going to be my big fight, then it's going to be my big fight. It'll happen at a good time. It'll most likely happen on my time. I'm coming off an injury. I'm going to become more popular. This is going to be a big fight, but it's going to happen at the right time, not this time, because this time is not right. Wow. Um, I got to give my honest thoughts like I always do on the channel. I've always been a huge advocate and supporter of Keith Thurman. But I got to say, man, I really feel like Keith Thurman, I'm disappointed. His energy seems like it has changed over the years. Like, I'm telling you, after he beat a no-name, the guy Laura, he was supposed to fight Maidana. Maidana pulled out. They're like, who's this guy with 19-0 and and 18 knockouts or whatever Thurman's record was? Maidana's camp, they second-guessed it or whatever, pulled out of the fight. He ended up fighting the Laura guy. After that, he called out Mayweather. And he's done this several times. I, right before the Leonard Bundu, maybe at the weigh-in, he's like, this year we burn, we burning money. Come on, Floyd, fight me, Floyd. You know what I mean? And he was he was pushing Floyd. I remember he pulled up on Pauli Malignaggi when Pauli Malignaggi was a welterweight champion. Like, you better not duck me, son. And for whatever reason, fast forward to the future, when it comes to Errol Spence Jr., that dialogue, that energy does not seem the same. The the talk has shifted. You know what I mean? And it's, it's weird because now it's like Errol Spence, like, what did Kanye say in that song? He said, he said, he said something about Jay. He's like, he said, Jay said, damn dog, you where I am. He said, damn dog, you where I am. Like, basically, we traded places. Like, you, you in the same, you in the same spot I was in. You know what I mean? And Errol Spence seems immensely hungry, wants to prove something. And Keith Thurman's admitting that he's hungry. I mean, even on Showtime, they have both of them in between, I think, with Brian Custer or whatever. And he said, he basically said something. Don't quote me on the actual verbiage, but the way I took it, he said something. Go listen to that Showtime in, in fight breakdown, in between the fight. He basically said, Errol Spence is hungrier than I am. He said, because he's like, I got more room. And then he it's like he realized what he said was came off like he was not hungry 
So he said, oh, I still got room in my belly, but I'm just saying he's hungry right now because he's new to this. And he kind of alludes to the same thing, right? And it's just like, he's like, oh yeah, Arrow's a good fighter. Um, it's just, it's, the talk just seems different to me. You know what I mean? Um, and, and I'm not, I can't, I have to be honest. I can't say I'm a fan of it. Like, oh, if there's no Keith Thurman, Pacquiao, Thurman, Mayweather, we could wait till the fight gets big. Listen, I said this years ago. Everybody wants to be Money Mayweather, but they don't want to go through the Pretty Boy Floyd stage. And just like Keith Thurman is saying, I didn't become a champ overnight, this, that, and the third. Mayweather didn't become who he was overnight. He was not Money Mayweather where he get to he get to pick his fights and do these blockbuster venues and live gates and stuff. He worked up to that point. And then after he beat De La Hoya, that's when he inherited the money persona. But it's like now these dudes see that you can get paid in the sport. And it's like they're trying to, and not just the fighters, but promoters like Canelo and Triple G. Why didn't that happen in 2016? It was hot. The fans wanted it. It looked like both teams allegedly wanted it. Golovkin was pushing for it. Canelo was like, oh, I'm from Mexico. We don't fuck around. Put the gloves on right now. And then it didn't happen. So everyone's trying to marinate and let fights postpone. That's the worst thing you could do in boxing because he's saying, oh, if I keep my own intact and he keeps his own intact, there's no guarantee of that. You know what I'm saying? What if what if a fighter gets injured in a fight and he loses, let's say it goes to the scorecards and he hasn't opened up yet and the other person wins by default because they had to go to the scorecard. You know what I mean? Anything can happen. People could look vulnerable, different things like that. So I don't prefer this type of talk from Keith Thurman. Like, for example, see, I don't just complain about the problem. I'll let you know what what I have issue with or whatnot. Another thing is this. Keith Thurman, it's almost like he wants to fight his mandatory. Now, I know a ton of fighters, both professionally and personally, and a lot of guys don't necessarily even take their mandatory serious or they don't want to necessarily even fight their mandatory. They would rather fight maybe the bigger fight. Like, for example, Deontay Wilder. He wants to fight Joseph Parker and he wants to fight Anthony Joshua, despite if you think he'll win or lose any of those fights. He has shown that that's what he wants. He wants to unify with the champion. He did not want to fight Bermain Stavern. In fact, he paid Bermain Stavern step aside money in the second fight to fight Luis Ortiz because he felt beating Ortiz, who was considered a boogeyman in his division, beating him would actually give his profile more of a boost than beating the guy he already beat. He didn't want to fight Bermain Stavern. You know what I mean? The only reason the Bermain Stavern fight happened when it happened was because Luis Ortiz failed his drug test with two, two banned ingredients on the, the VADA test and then the WBC canceled the fight. So by default, no need to pay someone step aside money and might as well get rid of your mandatory. But he wasn't looking to fight him. You know what I'm saying? Kell Brook, another person. He had, even though he had to fight Errol Spence, he was making up all these excuses. Oh, uh, it's hard to get up for a fighter like Errol Spence. No one really knows who Errol Spence is. Who is he really beat? Things like that. He was trying to get a fight with Pacquiao, trying to get a fight with Amir Khan, Kell Brook versus um, Jesse Vargas. He was trying to fight anyone else but Errol Spence. But after the Golovkin fight, the IBF said, hey, you've served your medical suspension, you recovered. You had surgery, you got to fight your mandatory. So he was, in essence, he had to. But the way Thurman's talking, it's like he wants to rematch Danny Garcia, a guy he cleanly beat. Sean Porter, now that fight was a little bit different. Sean Porter, Thurman, I thought Thurman won, but some people had Sean Porter winning, and they even booed Keith Thurman post-fight. So um, you can say the fight's closer, but he still got the victory. He still got the win, and people... Like I said, a rematch like that, that grudge is not going anywhere. You know what I'm saying? Like, if Danny Garcia gets past Brandon Reels, I, I'm pretty sure Sean Porter would settle for fighting Danny Garcia. And then if Keith Thurman gets the Vargas fight, gets past that and fights Errol Spence Jr., and then the winner of Errol Spence Jr., Keith Thurman, could fight Sean Porter and Danny Garcia fight uh, for three of the belts out of four. I mean, that sounds reasonable to me, but it, to me, it seems like Keith Thurman actually wants to fight his mandatory he'd rather rematch danny garcia he'd rather rematch against sean porter guys he already beat and then when it comes to errol spence you're like oh it'll happen when i want and it probably won't happen in 2018 
it'll probably happen in 2019 because I know how boxing works and they'll probably man it's like it's like you're hoping that they mandate you know what I mean and and the other thing is the other reason why it's, it's not to me a great look for Keith Thurman is because we all know in the sport of boxing things get done when there's a big fight on the line especially if it's a unification usually that could supersede or trump a fight that's just a mandatory i mean how many times have we seen it like for example joshua versus klitschko was for two belts it was a great fantastic first fight and they were scheduled to rematch they were trying to net the rematch in both of the fights one and two Kubrat Pulev was joshua's mandatory and Kubrat Pulev both times was paid step aside money to hold off they're also trying to get badu jack and adonis stevenson which means adonis stevenson's wbc one of the belts keith thurman has adonis stevenson's wbc mandatory a leader alvarez who's been his mandatory for a while will again have to step aside so that's more examples of what i'm telling you guys where adonis he's like man i'll fight badu jack that's a bigger money fight woom, woom, woom. if i beat him i'll get credit and they're trying to sew that up and he's not really even worried about his mandatory meanwhile on the flip side to me it sounds like keith thurman actually wants the wbc to mandate sean porter a guy he already fought and beat he wants him to mandate a rematch with danny garcia a guy he already fought and beat that's what's kind of weird to me whereas other champions they don't seem like like they'll fight their mandatories but they're not constantly talking about it meanwhile you have a guy who thurman admits is hungry and is undefeated unlike sean porter and danny garcia because thurman beat both of them plus sean porter has a loss to kill brook right and you have an undefeated errol spence who everyone is proclaiming as the best welterweight or one of them and it doesn't seem like he's really jazzed about fighting him he's talking about it'll happen on my accord and when i'm ready and this didn't happen overnight for me so big fights don't it just the whole energy sounds different to me and that's that's the best way to put it because when keith thurman was calling out mayweather who's not a big welterweight when he's calling out pacquiao not a big welterweight he was he was calling him out pretty aggressively at least on social media and stuff saying i want the fight i want the fight pacquiao sign me up let's make it but when it comes to errol spence it's like oh he's a talented fighter but that'll be in the future it is he has to just keep winning i have to keep winning why can't you guys fight Man, after such a big year, 2017, it's just like I, I would prefer to to see these types of fights and not hear the fighters talk like this. Because at the end of the day, boxing fans are not stupid. Errol Spence has a record of 22-0, 19 knockouts. Keith Thurman has a record of 28-0 with 22 knockouts. So in my opinion, clearly the fans will give a mass amount of praise even though Errol Spence is a quote-unquote new champion, he's still an Olympian, something Keith Thurman didn't go to the Olympics, right? Still an Olympian, and he's respected, and he's co-signed by all the, from Broner to Floyd Mayweather to Freddie Roach. So you beat him, it's going to give you more, like, more credibility as a champion and an extra belt than beating guys you already beat in Sean Porter and Danny Garcia. And not that they're bad fights, but... You know what the fan he keeps it's it's crazy because Thurman, I know he's an intelligent person, and he's he said it when he was next to Errol Spence. He said, Yeah, everyone wants to see me fight this kid, Errol Spence Jr. So you're admitting that you know what the fans want. But for one reason or another, it's like, oh, I'll probably be mandated to fight someone else. And listen, before I wrap this video up, I will say this. Keith Thurman coming back to Jesse Vargas. I've already made a video about it, but if you're new to the channel or you haven't checked it out, I have zero problems with him coming off of a long layoff and an injury and a surgery to fight Jesse Vargas. Jesse Vargas' game, I've never once bashed that fight. I understand that fight. I don't have any problems with that as a comeback fight, right? So be clear on that because a lot of people are spinning this and, and saying and flipping it as if I'm asking Keith Thurman to come off a long layoff and, and a surgery and an injury and tell him to immediately fight Errol Spence Jr., which is totally not the case. Errol Spence has to get past Lamont Peterson, which I think he will, maybe in a good fight, a tough fight or whatnot, but I think he will. I think he has the goods to do it. 
right? So nobody's talking about Keith Thurman immediately fighting Errol Spence Jr. That's a cop out that the the fanboys I, I've seen are using, and they're trying to make it like people like me who support Keith one time Thurman versus Errol the Truth Spence Jr. They're trying to make it as if we're really not being realistic and expecting Keith Thurman to come back immediately off an of injury and face a champion like Errol Spence. And that's not the case. We know he's coming off a long layoff and an injury. So that's why the Jesse Vargas fight is acceptable. No one's tripping off of that. But it's beyond that. Beyond that, he's basically saying, I think my whole 2018 is going to be booked up because I know boxing and they're probably going to mandate that I fight Sean Porter or fight Danny Garcia. You know what I'm saying? So it just, it doesn't look like Keith Thurman wants any parts of Errol Spence Jr. I don't know any sweeter or nicer way to say that. If you guys have some opposing evidence where it shows that he wants to fight him in 2018, and it's just crazy because like, even here's another thing. Okay, you fought one time, Keith Thurman fought one time this year against Danny Garcia got injured, had surgery, recovered, got married. Why can't you fight two, three times a year? Three times would be ideal. Fight against Jesse Vargas, get past him if you get past him, fight Sean Porter, Danny Garcia, and then close the year with fighting Errol Spence Jr. You know what I'm saying? If you have to fight your mandatory. But like I said, the, the, the game, we all know the game and how it works. Usually these sanctioning bodies, and I know the WBC for certain, I've even talked to Mauricio Suleiman. A lot of times they will step aside if it is a unification. And if you fight Errol Spence Jr., it will be just that, a unification. You know most sanctioning bodies will say, hey, Sean Porter, Danny Garcia, we understand you're the mandatory, but this is a big fight, the fans are asking for it, and it's a unification, you got next. You got the winner of this fight. And if, if you tell that to Sean Porter or Danny Garcia or whoever this mandatory is for Keith Thurman, they would probably accept it. Maybe they want some step aside money, but this is nothing new in boxing. You know what I mean? Kodo, his mandatory was Golovkin. Golovkin got paid some step aside money to make a big fight, Koto Canelo. You know what I'm saying? So whereas you see a lot of times guys aren't really tripping, their, their mandatories aren't necessarily in their forefront if there's a big fight in front of them. For some reason, that doesn't seem to be the case with Keith Thurman. So I, I just want Keith Thurman to kind of go back to the one time that we all know when he was coming up, better not duck me, son. You know what I mean, that one time. But saying Errol Spence, that he's a young champion. See, this these are the cop-outs in boxing. It's just like, I call it how I see. It's just like Golden Boy calling out Billy Joe Saunders as a runner. You're basically saying you know he would be tricky for Canelo. So now you're going to try to slander him and act like an appeal and cater to the casual fans. Billy Joe Saunders is a runner because he beat your other Golden Boy fighter, David Lemieux. And then now you're going to try to make him look unappealing or unappetizing because you know that style gives Canelo problems. That's how I view it. And the same thing with this Thurman fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, I read between the lines. Keith Thurman's like, oh, yeah, but he keeps saying, like, Errol Spence is this young and new champion. If he's so young and new, wouldn't this be the best time to like li listen to what people say, people? If Errol Spence is so young and new as a champion, wouldn't you want to fight him right now before he develops and gets any better? Keith Thurman is actually telling him to do just the contrary. He's telling him to get more title defenses, keep his O, and then we'll fight. But why would you want if you can if someone's young and new and they're still in the developmental stage? Why wouldn't you want to take advantage of that right now? And before he gets too much experience and too much confident from beating the Lamont Petersons and Luis Colazzo or whoever he beats in the future, you took care of him already and got all the accolades and the credit for it. You know what I'm saying? And no one's going to say anything. Like Roy Jones beat Bernard Hopkins and James Tony. No one didn't give him credit, even though those guys later went on to be great. You know what I mean? You still get credit for beating him. So... Uh, why, what, why would you suggest that a fighter basically keep their O, get better, and have more title defenses when you could take care of him now? Because you're basically making it like he's a he's a rookie champ. He's not on your level, and you're more versatile than him, 
and he's a he's the newest champion so why not take advantage of that just my thoughts people let me know what you guys think looks like it's going to be difficult to get this fight in 2018 let me know your thoughts on keith thurman and his thoughts on errol spence i know errol spence wants to fight i've talked to him i, I know for a fact he wants to fight and it's just like Wilder Joshua. I don't even care about a fight prediction at this point. I don't care who you think would win. It's about seeing it. It's about making it a reality for the fans. It's about making it happen. I know I would pay top dollar. I would fly to this fight. I would buy the pay-per-view. I would encourage it. I would make a boxing ego first look. I would build up the fight as much as I possibly can. Right? So they don't need to wait and let it marinate and all this. These, to me, these are new age cop-outs. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Make sure you smash the like button. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego Sunday. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.